Hi everyone, welcome back to the breadcrumbs project. Um, things are moving so fast, so I'm going to make a correction in a minute. But I started yesterday's video with this amazing picture from one of my uh, dear close friends and a fraternity brother in, uh, that lives in New Orleans. And um, he took a picture of the alignment of, uh, of the moon with, um, with uh, Jupiter and Saturn, and they have a line of the three, and then there is the fifth picture, I mean the fourth item, which is the, uh, the comet. So um, it was a rare alignment indeed. Uh, again, we had the Sun, uh, Saturn, Jupiter, the Moon, and then uh, there is uh, the comet. So I started the, uh, the comet atlas. I'm sorry, the comet, comet atlas. I'm not a professional at uh, rendering all of this information, but I'm delivering it to you uh, as best and as fast as possible. And some mistakes will be made. So uh, here's the picture that I started the video with yesterday. It was taken in New Orleans, and it was taken the day before yesterday. Uh, and so I saw it and I didn't even have time to comment on it. It was after I got the video uh, uh, cut. Uh, another mistake I made yesterday was uh, misnaming the, the uh, Nibiru or uh, what Comet Atlas ejected yesterday. I said it was uh, Pan Stars, Comet Pan Stars. It's not, it's, uh, it's uh, Comet Swan. And so a lot of my commenters commented on Comet Swan, and yes, that is that is what it is. So we saw the the ejection of this capsule, of this vehicle, of, I don't, we just don't know what it is at this point, but we know it's very big, it's coming to our planet, it will be here by mid to end of May, and, um, and so Comet Atlas, Nibiru is gonna continue on its journey it has not fallen apart, it has not broken apart. Here's a video shot 17 hours ago. It's the same huge size, it's the same amazing color. Uh, this is Mars Dust who has given us this video and uh, thank you so much for keeping track of, uh, of Comet Atlas of Planet Nibiru as it's making its journey and giving us amazing video. Uh, and he is taking this video from a video camera with a zoom lens. So this is not a telescope uh, sh uh, shooting this. This is uh, a brilliant idea, which is a telephoto zoom lens, which is capturing um, basically what, what is traveling through the skies. And he's also captured Comet Swan. So um, we have uh, both of them in the, in the picture. If you do your research, you're going to see that all of these uh, independent uh, astronomers are saying, wow, this comet Swan is the neat deal. It's getting brighter and brighter. It's getting brighter and brighter because it's coming closer and closer to the Earth. So it's going to make an Earth rendezvous. It's not just getting brighter and brighter, it's making an Earth rendezvous. Uh, I have to make the case again. We have not seen anything but the rarest of images from NASA. So if you do any search on Comet Atlas, you're going to see a rare close-up. Good gravy, America's paid billions upon billions upon billions of dollars and we get one rare close-up of this celestial event. NASA is completely radio silent on this enormous event and now we have this comet that is getting brighter and brighter and notice this comet was found by an amateur. I mean, you know, this thing is, is big and, and the Atlas program didn't find it and all of that space technology out, we have out there wasn't able to find this. Borisov was found by an amateur and, um, and then uh, Hawaii uh, accidentally found Oumuamua when it was leaving. Its trajectory was leaving our solar system. So it had already been in our solar system. We really don't know how long. 
So Oumuamua, the first interstellar visitor, was uh, the government was quiet on it until one of the observator private observatories found it exiting. That's strange. Number two, the second interstellar visitor, we got a couple of images from NASA, a little bit of excitement, and then on March 19th, radio silence. Everything went quiet. We had one brief flurry of news and uh, and excitement, and then just shut. Everything went down. This is before the the COVID virus, which is so strange. Of course, it's strange. I mean, this was going to be a big event, and then nothing, and then suddenly we have this blue comet that we can see. And who is quiet? But all of the space agencies around the world. And they're not battling COVID. They're not battling COVID-19. They're quiet for a reason. And so who made the discovery of this brand new comet that just came out of nowhere, where all of these space agencies are designed to protect us and to alert us from near Earth objects? A complete amateur. Swan. So, we have the visual and photographic evidence of this one item ejecting. I have a video on it, so if you want to go, uh, go to research that. And it is the same trajectory, same approach as, uh, as following this ejector would. So Comet Swan is what um, Comet uh, so I, hate, keep, I hate, keep saying Comet Atlas because it's not a comet. It's enormous. It is enormous. It's half the size of the sun. It's over 600,000 miles in circumference. 400 to 600,000 miles in circumference. And that's it. I mean, it's not an ice block or anything. It's, it's bigger than Jupiter. You can put 10 Jupiters in this thing easily. And it's out there and it's blue. And it's bluish green. If, if you watch the video, it has a bluish green tint. And if you get some good close ups on the video that, that Mars Dust has, um, has published, it has a bluish greenish tint in the same way a blurry planet Earth would have a bluish greenish tint. So Comet Atlas has from a distance, a blurry distance, a very Earth-like look, except it's, you can put 30,000 Earths in this thing that's traveling through space that you can see through, with, your, with your eye now. And we're gonna, it's going to get closer and closer and closer, and we're going to see it. It has not broken apart. That is misinformation that is put out by the government on purpose because the big event is going to happen, and they have to have us as calm as humanly possible until uh, the big event happens. So what keeps us calm is another enemy, which is COVID. Uh, there's got to be a relationship between COVID and this giant astronomical event. And there's got to be a very good reason why uh, National Geographic doesn't have this all over their channel and, you know, featuring the scientists and the, ah, and these, and this is an amazing thing, and this is who found it, and this is how they did it. No, the whole scientific and astrological and astronomical community is completely silent on this event, and the only pictures and videos we have are from amateurs. There is a reason. All right. Um, Next video has to do with threes. Three has become so important in all of this. Right now we have three. We have Comet Atlas. Then we have um, Comet Catalina, which I've talked about previously in another video. And that has been a, a red star that has, that has appeared. And it is uh, Catalina US-10 C-2013. So this comet has been around the Earth since 2013 that we've identified it. And it's still close to the Earth. It has done a perihelion already, but as sure as a slow journey on its way out. So it is actually uh, very, very close and it has come up as a red star. And um, 
and it's, it's the red kashina, which the uh, which the Hopi uh, have given warning to, and it is the red dragon that Japanese and Chinese lore have uh, have have given reference to, and then we have the blue dragon uh, as well. So, or, and then there's a blue puppy uh, in the, Japan, the Japanese um, uh, legend that ties all of this together with the Orion Nebula, uh, the Orion, Orion constellation. Um, so, three is very important, and three goes back to the, the Zoroastrian religion, which has three main tenets. And that is to think good thoughts, say good words, and do good deeds, three. And then we have our time, which is divided into 60 minutes, which is divisible by three. And then we have um, 12 hours in a day, which is divisible by three. And, uh, uh, and then 24 hours in a day, which is divisible by, by three. We have a, the day broken up into two, two 12-hour segments, divisible by three, 24 hours in a day, divisible by three, um, 12 months in a year. And all of these number 12 and divisible by three items came back, came from the Sumerians, all right? A baker's dozen, 12, uh, 12 items, 12 loaves in a dozen is a Sumerian uh, concept and is something the Sumerians taught the entire planet. So all of this came from one place. And then, oddly enough, there's 72 virgins, and 72 is also divisible by three. Um, the 12 apostles, divisible by three. Uh, 12, the 12 nations of, of Israel. Um, so three is very prominent, and we have three items right now. Again, Comet Catalina, the red star. Then we have the blue star. Uh, which is Comet Atlas, and now we have Comet Swan, which is the arriving vehicle um, that, that will be here uh, at the end of May, and uh, it goes again with, with, the, with the Hopi um, prophecy, which the mask will be, will be torn off, will be taken off. All the world will see who the real one true God is, and there will be no denying it, and that will be the creator. Some people are going to freak out. There's going to be, I think, an EMP that's going to take out all technology, and for several months we're going to be living uh, in our basics again. We're going to be humbled a little bit by our creator, and then we're going to rebuild the planet in a very positive manner. I think uh, what makes us evil will be removed from us, and uh, we'll, we'll be living in a society of just pureness and goodness. And I think immortality is going to be uh, granted upon us. Uh, and um, so there's going to be a lot happening. Uh, pay attention to not only uh, Comet Atlas, it's going to continue its journey. And it will be our Bethlehem star uh, on, uh, around Christmas time. And uh, Comet Swan is going to keep getting brighter and brighter and brighter and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as it gets closer and closer and closer. <sighs> yeah. All right, guys. Uh, so we'll talk about the power of three in my next video, which will be tomorrow, uh, which is Saturday, which is the Sabbath. Um, I don't know if, that, if I'm going to be working, but I'm going to be doing something I very much enjoy, and that is informing and teaching and, um, and getting everybody that is paying attention and have eyes to see and ears to listen to get prepared uh, for what's happening. Two to four months of supplies and have, have good fresh water close by. If you're on a place that has good fresh water close by, Start thinking about making a move to the country, go seeing some friends, go seeing some family out there, mid-May sometime. But guys, it's going to be serious. I don't want to scare anybody, but you have to plan and prepare. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. He's already made many warnings and prophecies that there's going to be tribulation when he comes because not everybody's going to be willing to accept it and there's going to be a total meltdown of society in many places. Many places are going to be like, fine, yep, we're good with this, we're ready. All right, you know, and, uh, and the, more, the more rural you are, the more um, closer to nature you are, 
the, the close the, the finer you're going to be with it. The, 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 the tribes in the forests of, of Brazil are going to be okay with an EMP. It's not going to make them any difference. If you are in a very sophisticated large city and don't have access to a lot of transportation, um, mostly as rail and cars, well, you're going to have a lot of trouble. It's going to be chaos for you. And this is just my prediction going on all the prophecies and predictions that all of the religions have talked about over time. So uh, it's my rendition of it. Uh, try not to be in a big city next month. Try to be out in the country with people that know how to survive. Tr try to have two to four months worth of dry goods and supplies and water and whatever it's going to take you for you to, surprise, to, to survive for four months. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not joking. Wine, whiskey, beer, all those things that, that you enjoy, just be ready to hunker down for a while because things are going to get crazy. All right, guys. Uh, any questions or comments, please post them below. Swan is getting closer, bigger, and brighter. Comet, um, Comet uh, Atlas is continuing its journey. It's going to be a Bethlehem star. It's going to be a star in the east. It's probably going to be a six-pointed blue star uh, in the east. And uh, Comet Catalina, the red star, is very important. That could be where our souls uh, depart to. That's where our souls go. Um, and this is the, the final bit of, of my video. Please like the video. Please share this video. Please subscribe to the channel. If I am wrong, all you're going to do is have three to four months worth of supplies that you're just going to go ahead and use as you normally would. No hit, no foul. If you have to get out of the city, you're going to have a nice, nice extra vacation of the COVID vacation type. So that's the worst that can happen if, if you heed my warnings. So like, share, subscribe so we can uh, amplify the message and get this message out. It's not a really crazy thing. Um, finally, uh, I think uh, Comet Catalina, which has been very close to the sun, I think for many uh, thousands upon thousands of years, is the object that's been collecting the souls of our dearly departed. Because if, and, and I've done a lot of research on this, if, if you pay attention to uh, people that have and not everybody that has uh, come back to life, a near-death experience, has something to say, but just about everybody that's had that near-death experience uh, that has something to say basically says the same thing, that they, they, they see their body, they have an outer body of experience, they see the whole room, and then, they've, uh, then they, they, they um, eventually, after a period of time of being on the earth, they get called to go to the light, go to the light, go to the light. And some of them even see that they're being greeted by a very close loved one, someone that they admire, someone that they, they had a close relationship with, is ready to greet them. But when they come back to life, they come back into their bodies. And I mean, this is a story that's over and over again from so many different cultures. There's actually a couple of societies dedicated to these near-death experiences and, and what happens. And some people have very bad uh, uh, very bad uh, experiences, and they, they've said it was, it was painful and scary and, and something that they'd, they'd akin to a hell, and many that have had this near-death experience change their way of life uh, immediately upon coming back into their bodies, like, oh my gosh, I have to change this. So you can research that. Uh, so I think that uh, Comet Catalina has had a close sun orbit. And so as, you, as a spirit goes towards the sun, goes towards the light, then uh, it, I would, and this is just my guess, it was, it's been captured, maintained, and lovingly uh, curated. The souls that have, that have departed are, have been lovingly curated in uh, this comic Catalina, which is making an, an approach to the earth as well. So I think our dearly departed are coming back. I think the earth is going to change. I think all of the, the prophecies are going to come true. And we're going to have a new fifth age of, of peace and happiness with our ancestors and, uh, uh, and immortality. All right. 20-minute video. I only want to make it a five-minute video, but peace. And I'll see you tomorrow.